wanted to take a few minutes today and announce that we have signed uh, Chris McCullough to uh, a contract extension to keep him here long term at the university. And we're excited that he has chosen to stick around and, and stay a Falcon long term. Um, this contract has come together, you know, pretty quickly. We appreciate the. There's been a lot of donor activity, uh, the very generous donors who stepped up and uh, expressed we want to make sure that that Chris is here long term, and they have stepped up in a big way and are continuing to do so. So we're really appreciative of them. Um, I'd like to bring uh, the president of the university, Dr. Woodley, up, say a few things about what what the football season and Chris has meant to the university as well. Dr. Woodley. What an exciting time it is for the university to have such amazing momentum in our athletic programs. We are thrilled to um, sign this contract today to keep the momentum going with Chris McCullough. He's an exceptional talent. Uh, and beyond his exceptional talent, he has brought together the family uh, of the student athletes and worked with them both on and off the field. And we really appreciate that in our community. Our community has responded to the momentum of the football program, but we have a lot of uh, momentum in all of our athletic programs. And so again, I would like to thank the, uh, the community for stepping up and helping with the donations that allow us to continue this momentum. And it is my pledge to make sure that we can continue those efforts on behalf of all the athletic programs here at the university. I think it's exciting to see uh, a winning season and it's also very exciting to see the community really enjoy those efforts. And I think it's also important to note that the uh, success of our athletic programs uh, really do contribute to the overall success of the university. We connect the two. The ability for this community to get excited about the athletic programs, but also to invest in the university uh, to move the athletic programs along does affect our enrollment. It affects the excitement of, of students who want to come and make this their home. Uh, and so we uh, love this opportunity to keep uh, all of this amazing success going and big kudos to Chris McCullough and all that he has brought to this program and to all of the coaches uh, of our other athletic programs. We're uh, excited and it's no better time than to be a Falcon. So thank you. And I just, I just want to say thank you to Dr. Woodley uh, for embracing the vision of, of you know, where, that Chris has taken, where Chris has taken the football program and, and stepping up and, and wanting to make this commitment as well um, to the football program, to athletics in general, and to Chris. And so thank you, Dr. Woodley, for that. Um, at this time, I want to bring Chris up and, and let him say a few words. Um, and then uh, afterwards, Chris and I are happy to take some, some questions from you guys. Appreciate you, Steph. Yeah, truly, truly a great day for, for me, my family, but also a great day for, for us as a program, knowing the leadership and, and the commitment that they have and the community has to not just me and my family, but my staff and, and our program moving forward, and not just our program, but all of athletics. I think you see the success that football had kind of carried on to other sports. You know, tennis and golf had great seasons and, and still going with golf. Uh, but our basketball teams are, are doing their part as well, being both seven and two. So uh, the athletic department hasn't been in this good of a shape since I think football started. And a, a big kudos to Todd Dooley and, and Dr. Sandra Woodley. Uh, the direction of this university is the huge reason why I committed to staying here long term. Um, I, it's not just words. It's the actions and the, the things that I'm able to see um, for the future of this place that that makes me want to stay here. Uh, and hopefully raise KJ here. Uh, long term extension, just so. So yeah, so the contract is um, will start effective be effective January one and runs through 2026. But there are incentives built in for winning seasons, so a certain number of games can automatic will automatically extend the contract. So the maximum it could run to is to 2029. Okay, so what's that feel like how that starts? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, uh, I took over a program that had only won five games maximum and to double that. Um, but this this commitment, this contract, able to roll over to 2029, just like I said, it shows the leadership of our university and our athletic department. And that commitment to me, um, you know, our, our staff, the, the biggest thing for me throughout this whole process was making sure my staff felt safe and we felt safe to be here 
for long term. I don't want them to run and take other jobs, right? Um, so getting them and keeping our leadership on the football program in SAC is huge. And uh, uh, I believe it's uh, was it a no brainer for you? Will you take care of like anyone else? I Chris and you guys. Well, I think there's always a concern for that. And um, Chris and I had some very frank and open conversations about uh, the coaching carousel that that was going on and. Um, I know he was getting some looks and people were calling and, and asking questions and to be able to lock him down um, and dissuade others, you know, that they were going to have to come with, at a pretty high level to even attract him and, and catch his eye, um, that, that means a lot. So, Coach Butler, you have him in security now for up until 2029. Just so what does that mean for you, especially for recruiting process down the line? It, it is just that. The recruiting process, this is huge. You know, there's a lot of negative recruiting out there, other universities. We won the Lone Star Championship. they got to find something bad to talk about <laughs> us, right? We got – when I call the Palace, the Kirk Edwards uh, Center, I mean, you have to nitpick little things to be able to recruit against us because I hate saying it. Just like on the football field, I'm going to beat everybody I go up against, whether that's recruiting, on the field, off the field, it doesn't matter. So uh, this just shows the community, the, all, all of social media when we post it that, you know, this isn't something where I'm just going to leave after one great year. Like, I'm here to sustain success. And that's the key is sustaining success. It's easy to have one good year. It's the commitment that we're having right here allows us to sustain success for years and years to come. What was the original deal? For what you yeah, so the original contract was a three-year contract um, that ran through uh, 2026. Am I right? My, I hate doing public math. The end of 2025. Yeah, tw yeah 2025. And, uh, and so um, we picked up, we, we put that one aside and did a new one and, and moving forward with that. So the biggest thing with this contract is the ability as we win seven plus games is to continue to roll this contract over and keep me here, uh, like he said, long term. Yeah, that, that was important for all of us, uh, for Dr. Woodley, for Chris and me um, to say, all right, we understand that. We don't want to just sign a three-year deal and then have to come back maybe every year and redo another three-year deal. It was to put it on paper and put it in place so that it worked its way out for the next several years. Sure. You've talked about it, but what is your vision for this program? What can this place? Yeah, I think when I took over, and I, I truly do mean this, I think the foundation was already laid for this program. It's a, it's a newer program, but uh, Justin Kerrigan did a phenomenal job in the early going getting this thing built from the ground up. So. In my opinion, when you build a program and you build a football uh, culture, you kind of it's like building a house, right? It started with the foundation, the concrete, and Justin did that. I think now we've built the walls of the house. Now it's just putting the roof on it. So we had a f phenomenal year. Um, my key is to make sure a Lone Star Championship is an uh, every year thing. Um, but I was torn apart when we lost that first round playoff game. Like that's not my goal is to make it one round. I came here to win championships. Uh, when I took an interview here and decided to take this job, it was because of these two people, Dr. Woodley and Todd. Uh, but it was also because I knew I could win a national championship here. It's only a matter of time. And we took that first step of making the playoffs, winning conference and all that. But now it's time to look further. Like I want to be regional champs. I want to be national champs. So, um, you know, this allows us to get a, a bigger head start in recruiting. Obviously winning helps, but showing that our – the guys we were competing up with, the other universities, that hey, I'm here to stay, and you're gonna have to come beat us. You said that keeping you was a priority. Just uh, did you take any off? Did you hear any other offers from other schools? Yeah, I mean, he said, I, yes, I got phone calls, um, as any good coach should after a season. Um, just like after a good year of athletics, he should get phone calls. Our president should get phone calls about uh, opportunities at other universities. That's part of our profession. Um, the key is, are we going to listen to those, or are we going to want to stay home? And I want to stay home. No, it's awesome. You know, a coach's wife is probably the hardest job in the world because, um, you know, we just went through a long season, getting to make the playoffs extra extra week there added where we didn't get to see each other a whole lot. Um, well, most jobs, you have a tough season, and then, Afterwards, you get family time. No, not for football, not for athletics. Now it's been to recruiting. So six months out of the year, we don't see each other very often. Um, so her knowing and being comfortable with this area and not having to pack up the house again and move and all that stuff is huge because, uh, I mean, it puts a lot of stress on her thinking about where we're going to be the, the next year.
she doesn't have to worry about that right and now. I, I want to speak to that for a minute too. And um, when we, when when I approach and recruit, I recruit coaches. That's that's who I recruit, coaches, the staff. And, and when we recruit, we we put forward that it's family, and we want a family atmosphere. And so um, we had an open position in athletics for a part time administrative help, and we hired Hannah McCullough. I mean, that was a no brainer for us. I mean, so. Um, Hannah's up here most days of the week. Um, KJ's here. You know, KJ's being pan passed around across the office and, and multiple babysitters across, you know. And so we, we put our, we, we show it, we demonstrate it. And that's, that's important to us to be able to do those kind of things for our, our, our people. And uh, we want to we continue to do those things and, and show that we mean what we say. We want to create a family atmosphere. Yeah. Family is our culture of football, right? We, we talk about it a lot, but it's not just something we talk about here at UTPB. It's something we live on an everyday basis, starting with him, starting with Dr. Woodley. Like family is everything to us, um, and, and this shows it right here. How are you hoping this decision um, will help continue to build a fan base that, you know, is excited about college football here in a place like a hot dog culture? You want to take it? Yeah, I, I mean, in, in Texas alone, right? You got the Longhorns playing for the college football playoffs and national championship. Outside of them, who's the the top Texas team? It's us. We have the second best record in Texas. So, being able to continue to grow our fan base, obviously, football is huge in the Permian Basin, but we're still a relatively new program that's finally hitting its stride and success. So, everybody wants to be a part of that. Well, if you lose a head coach, you kind of lose some excitement there. Um, well. I'm here to stay for a while, so you're not going to lose that excitement. We're going to continue to build this family and continue to build our brand of football for the Permian Basin. Yeah, and I think um, you know, having, having these pieces in place long term really helps us build on that momentum. Um, you know, our next steps are football stadium, revamping all of our athletic facilities, all of these things. So we have it on campus and, and we do have that attraction and appeal as a college football town, not just a high school football town. A college football town as well. I mean, there are, there are a lot of universities within the Lone Star Conference in the state of Texas as well that would love to be in a metropolitan area like Midland and Odessa. I mean, we have over 300,000 people in, in the population here and stuff, and there aren't many places like that, many universities that have that population driver. So we, we can be really elevated just given our, our population base. Absolutely. Appreciate yeah. you guys. Thank, Thank you all. You.